so not believable. Yay, The Martian! Super awesome film. Matt Damon really sciences the shit out of everything, but also super full of scientific mistakes. Here's everything you need to know so you can watch The Martian with full-on scientific superiority. Number one, the evacuation from Mars is caused by a huge windstorm. Now, Mars does have wind, but it only has an atmosphere about 1% of the density of Earth's, which means you would never have a windstorm that was so strong as to cause an evacuation. Number two, a huge part of this movie is Watney trying to make water. In fact, he blows himself up in the challenging process. But the Curiosity rover just discovered water on the surface of Mars, which means all Watney would have had to have done is like dig up some soil and bring it inside and heat it up. Boom, water. Number three, the air pressure on Mars is super low. It's so low, in fact, that water at body temperature would boil away. So that means if Watney's suit depressurizes, any liquids in his body, like his saliva and the air in his lungs, would boil. But somehow, when Watney's suit is pierced, the blood from his body plugs the hole. But really what would happen is that blood would have boiled away. Number four, all the way through the movie when he's digging, he's like, Mars, so heavy, everything's so heavy, my shovel's so heavy, it's so hard work. But the gravity on Mars is like way lower than Earth, so really, it would have been super light for him. Number five, when Watney accidentally blows up part of his pod, he patches the huge hole with nothing but plastic and duct tape. Now, as we remember, the pressure difference between Earth and Mars is huge, and also there's these amazing winds in this new Mars, so... I don't know if a plastic duct tape would have done the job. Number six, there is a lot of radiation in space, dangerous radiation, radiation that kills us. Fortunately, we're protected on Earth by the Earth's atmosphere. But when we're on Mars or when we're in space, they don't have the atmosphere to protect us. Watney's stay on Mars would have exposed him to like a hundred times the amount of radiation that is safe for a nuclear power plant worker. Even if future NASA had managed to invent a radiation proof suit and a radiation proof lab, Unlikely. He still spent a lot of time being protected by nothing but a plastic top all in. So luckily the movie ends on day one back at NASA because on day two he gets diagnosed with fatal cancer and dies. Number seven. The average temperature on Earth is 57 degrees Fahrenheit or about 14 degrees Celsius. And on Mars it's negative 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So he probably would have frozen to death because he was protected by nothing but a plastic tarpaulin for half the movie. Number eight, Mars's gravity is about one third that of Earth. So whilst he would have been fine for a little while, after a super huge long stay on Mars, as in the movie, his cardiovascular and muscular systems would have been totally fucked up. Number nine, whether Watney would have had enough oxygen for his stay is questionable. There was enough for six people for 30 days, and even with a huge buffer, he still would have needed about three times the allocation of oxygen to have survived such a long period. Whether NASA provided that much is not really explained in the movie. Number 10, there's this scene where Donald Glover explains to Jeff Daniels, the head of NASA, what a gravity assist is. Now, that's kind of like a lawyer having never heard of the Fifth Amendment. Now, I know this video is only 10 things wrong with The Martian, but I'm going to give you a number 11. This whole movie would have been so much more believable if Watney had turned out to actually be MacGyver, because he seems to fix everything with like this magical duct tape that fixes every problem, and he has an unlimited supply of it. He fixes everything with duct tape. And he performs major rocket surgery with no tools. How does he do that? He's MacGyver. So even with these 10 scientific questionable mistakes, the movie was still pretty awesome and you should totally go and see it. Thanks for watching PsyQ. See you next time. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching PsyQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.